Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. Time for a shed session today. So basically what I'm gonna to do today is have a look at a bit of a Ned Rig 101. So I've had lots of people sending in some questions and, and sending me messages and that sort of thing, asking questions about the Ned Rig, uh, how, how to fish it, how to rig it, all of that sort of thing. So I thought today we'd take a bit of time to break down the Ned Rig, break down the gear we use, break down how we use it, where we use it, and, and what works. So firstly, my Ned Rig kit, people have said to me, well, firstly, the Ned Rig, what is the Ned Rig? So the Ned Rig basically started in the States. It was a Midwestern finesse technique. Ned Keedy was the guy that invented it, hence the Ned Rig. And basically it was a small stick bait plastic on a mushroom style jig head and it was all about stand up that rapid stand up that hinging of the plastic so basically what we do is we team up a mushroom style jig head in this case the tt lewis nedlocks jig head with a buoyant plastic so here we have the 10 times tough z-man plastic so the z-man elastic plastic is naturally buoyant so it's going to give us that rapid stand up that hinging that we want out of it and teamed up with that mushroom style head that tt lewis nedlocks we get that rapid stand-up presentation. So the theory is that plastic is working for you all the time. So when you're moving it, when you're retrieving it, whether you're twitching it, whether you're hopping it, whether you're dragging it, it's moving, its claws are up or its tail is up and it's attracting predators. You hop it up off the bottom, you can swim it. As soon as you pause it, it rapidly hinges back and falls to the bottom pretty much on the spot. And it's got its claws up or it's got its tail up. So it looks like it's feeding on the bottom or it looks like it's defending itself. So that fleeing and defending, that natural movement, that natural stand up is what triggers strikes and it just works for you right throughout the retrieve. <clears throat> so that's basically what the Ned Rig is. So how do I store my Ned Rig and how much gear do I take with me was another question that I had. So for me, I basically run a couple of these TT Deluxe Z-Man binders. So this is the smaller size, the single size. So in this kit here, I have about a dozen plastics. I've got a small tackle tray of jig heads. I've got a couple of scent. I've got a couple of liters, um, boomerang tool snips. So I've got a bunch of gear in there. And in there, I've got my general estuary kit. So I've got two and a half inch grubs, two and a half inch slims from strange minnows uh, and a few other bits and pieces in there. So that's one kit. And I also have the same again with my Ned Rig kit. So I basically got these two bags general estuary three inch minnows and some bigger stuff and then purely ned rig if i want to just grab one or the other i can if i want to take both i can and i generally just put it in a dry bag so whether i'm jumping in a mate's boat whether i'm going in the kayak the sup stand you know whatever stand up paddle boarding whatever i'm doing i can drop one or two of those bags in this dry bag leave a bit of air in there and the whole theory behind that is that this bag will now float so if it ends up in the water, it's still going to float. So I know a few guys that have had some kayak mishaps and that sort of thing lost their gear. Not going to happen in this case because we're in that dry bag and we've got enough air in there to float the contents of the dry bag. So we can have one or two bags in there and we're ready to go. So to break down my Ned Rig kit, we've got that single bag. And inside here, there's about a dozen packets of plastics. And those rings there are designed to fit the little pre-punched holes in the bottom of the Z-Man packets. So in here I have got 2.75 inch TRD bugs, a few packets of them. I've got 2.5 inch TRD craws, I've got a few packets of those. I've also got three inch TRD hogs, which are another bit of a sneaky secret scroll and I'll show you a bit about those shortly. So TRD hogs, I've got a packet of crusties, I've got a packet of grubs, and I've got a packet of slim swims. So that might be uh, like that's a good example of what I might carry in my Ned Rig kit in terms of a dozen packets of plastics. So I've got a little two and a half, a little two inch crusties, which is an excellent, really finesse presentation when it's set up on that Ned Rig. So I've got a, my two inch crusties. I've got a two and a half inch TRD craws, which is a yabby or crawfish imitation with those lots of movement in those claws the trd bugs is an interesting one i'm not sure exactly what it is but it catches fish which is great and it's basically a good fat rib body with four appendages coming out out of the packet the crusties and the trd bugs you've got to remember to pop those claws apart to give maximum action so you can see crazy amount of action 
in that little plastic. So that's our 2.75 inch TRD bugs. And then we've got our three inch TRD hogs as well. So that's another great plastic. I trim it down a tiny bit, but we'll talk about that a bit later. And also, for those of you at home, you've probably already got some two and a half inch grubs and some two and a half inch slim swims. If you haven't, you should get out there and get some because they're absolutely awesome. But just because we're fishing the Ned Rig, it doesn't mean that we can't fish these more traditional plastics as well. So when I'm using these more crustacean style of plastics, I'll slow it down. I'll hop it and drop it, pop it, pick those pockets, fish it a lot slower. But if I want to fish over the top of weed or cover a bit of ground, I'll actually fish what I call the swimming Ned Rig. So I'm still using my Ned Locks jig head, my mushroom head but I'm putting a plastic on it that has more tail action built into it. And I'm actually twitching, shaking, swimming, slow rolling, covering the flats, covering ground. But because I've got that mushroom head on there, that Ned Locks, I can stall it and it'll pop straight up and drop into the pocket. So say I'm rolling a big flat that's predominantly weed, I'll roll over the top of it for most of the fishing. Oh, here's a sand pocket. Roll, stop, pop it into the pocket. Pop it, drop it, pop it, drop it, and I'll hop it through that, that sand pocket. So it allows me to fish fast, but I can also stall it and slow it down. So if I'm fishing fast and I'm spending more time working specific smaller pieces of structure, I'll often fish a two and a half inch grubs or a two and a half inch slim swims on that Ned Locks jig head. If I'm slowing things down and I really want to fish more traditional uh, Ned Rig style, I'll use one of those more crustacean style plastics and I'll slow it, a lot, slow it down a lot more and I'll be doing a lot more dragging, hopping, you know, just shaking it through structure and that sort of thing. So both work, that's for sure. And, and worth having a couple of these in your kit as well as your more specific TRD style Ned Rig baits. So that little Slim Swims, for example, recently I was up on the flats uh, rolling weed and I found a nice sandy pocket. It was blowing about 25 knots. So I was anchoring in the kayak, anchored on one side of the sandy pocket probably the size of a car, fish to the other side of the sand pocket. And because I was fishing with the Ned Rig on a Slim Swims, I could just give it a shake and stop it and it would just stand straight up. Give it a shake, stop, straight up. So it allowed me to really pick that apart, even though it was only a small sand patch. Boom, 80 centimetre flathead and half a metre of water. And it just, it could not resist after a few casts through that area. It couldn't resist a little Slim Swims standing upright on that Ned Locks and it just drilled it. So that was a really nice fish. So, the Ned Rig. In our kit here, we've got our dozen or so plastics. We've talked a little bit about them. The jig head is a TT Lewis Ned Locks. So basically, I've just got a small tray and that small tray fits in the pocket inside that as well. So in my bag, I've got my plastics and I've got my jig heads. In here, you'll see a few different colors. So we've got our chartreuse head, We've got our orange head, we've got our black head, we've got some green pumpkin heads. So where do I fish the different colors was another question that I had from people. So for me, if I'm fishing dark, muddy bottom, weedy bottom, a lot of the time I'll go with a really dark, natural colored plastic and also jig head. So around the weed beds and around the muddy bottom, I'll often fish a black or a green pumpkin head and I'll fish something like that Drew's Craw, TRD Craws, which is a very nice natural, it's got copper and silver and black and lots of different fleck in there, very natural crabby looking sort of color. So that's a good real dark, dirty water type presentation. When I get to the yabby bed and it's predominantly yabby beds that I'm fishing, I'll switch it up and I'll change over to that orange head with that greasy prawn colored TRD Craws. So now I'm very much imitating a yabby. So the different colored heads you can use for different applications. That's a really natural application. That's more of an orange strike trigger. So worth throwing it around a weed in that as well. You've just got to mix it up until you find what works. A lot of the time I'm fishing slow and natural. If I'm fishing a bit more aggressive than that over the yabby beds and things, I'll throw that orange head on. The orange head also goes really well if you're up those muddy creeks, mangrove creeks, where there's lots of fiddler crabs. So those little crabs with the big orange claw, if you rig a natural sort of colored plastic with that orange head and you throw it hard against those mud banks 
under the mangroves and where there's a drop off, a lot of the time that plastic will not even drift to the bottom before a brim's nailed it or, or a cord or something's nailed it on the edge. And I think it's that orange of the head matching that orange of the claw. It's just a really natural trigger with that natural colored plastic representing the rest of the crab. So that's a really good one to try as well. And then the chartreuse, I generally fish in the heavier weights and I love it for a flathead edge bite. So flathead love a chartreuse head. This I fish in a one fifth or a one sixth and I fish it on the edges. I'll often fish it with a motor oil colored TRD craws or just one of the naturally colors and hop it down the edges. So that's primarily what I use the chartreuse for. So you might use it for other applications, you know, really good on bass and all that sort of thing as well. So in here, we've got one fifteenth ounce. So the one fifteenth, I don't fish a lot. The one fifteenth I primarily fish if I'm fishing shallow brim structure, high up around mangrove edges and that sort of thing on the two inch crusties, I'll fish the one fifteenth. A lot of the time I go to a one tenth when I'm fishing flats, shallows, edges, that sort of thing, where it's shallow water, I'll fish the one tenth. And then the one fifth and one sixth, I've got a few in here and I primarily use them for edge bites and deeper drains. So where it's dropping to say, more than a meter and a half of water or two meters into three meters, I'll step up and go with that one fifth or that one sixth. So let's have a look at a few of my favorite plackies. People said, what are your favorite plastics? What are your favorite colors in the Ned rig? Um, I would probably go, if I'm going a TRD Craws, I like that greasy prawn for the yabby beds, Drew's craw for rubbly, rocky bottom, weedy bottom, and then it's hard to go past motor oil as well in that TRD craws as another good color. But I've caught fish on all the colors, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It's more about trying to match the environment you're fishing or matching what the fish are eating. So they're all good colors. Uh, in the 2.75 inch TRD bugs. So people have said to me, oh, I don't know about the TRD bugs. It's got a bit of a fat body on it. It's got a ribbed fat body. That ribbed body holds scent really, really well. It also weedless rigs really well on a tiny uh, snake locks finesse. So it does weedless rig if you want to hop through the weed flats for flathead and that sort of thing. But this little plastic has these four arms and I think it just drives fish nuts. And I, I fish it when I need a really slow finesse type presentation, especially. You can pick it up, you can shake it faster and that, but if you want to fish a bit more finesse, the TRD Craws has quite large claws that it throws around. So a good for aggressive feeding fish. If the fish are a bit more timid, you can step back to that TRD Bugs. And it's amazing how a brim that doesn't want to eat will suddenly just inhale that whole thing. And all you'll see sticking out is the jig head. So it looks like quite a bulky plastic, but they absolutely inhale it and just eat it. No problem at all. So that's the 2.75 inch TRD Bugs. I use both of those plastics in my general Ned Rig fishing. You can put either of those on, on my rod and I'd be happy. And they're great for brim, flathead, trevally, cod, tailor, everything eats them pretty much, whatever you'll find in the, in the river and estuary systems, as well as dynamite in freshwater as well. But they're both excellent. I'd say this, the TRD Craws is a little more aggressive than the, than the TRD Bugs, but both very, very good presentations. Both probably my two favorites they are on the, that Ned Rig setup. The other one I talked about was the TRD hogs. People said to me, do you fish the hogs? Three inch TRD hogs. I do. Three inch, you can rig it three inches, but it is quite long on the heads because the Nedlocks heads are generally uh, smaller hook size, so two or a one. So what I do is I snip its head off. Basically, I snip it off just behind the first two little feelers. And that just brings the profile down so that it sits perfectly on that. Nedlocks jig head, so I don't know if you can see its arms waving around there, but it's a, it's an interesting plastic. I tend to leave the flat section at the back and the two antennae loose, so I'm popping out basically back at the edge of the ribbed section. The cool thing about the Z-Man plastics, 10 times tough, super soft and flexible, so you can trim them and chop them and change them around if you do want to. In the center of this, so it's very ribbed plastic which holds scent well, but in the center is a core right down the center, which means you can cut it to any size you like and still rig it effectively. So. There we go, I've got it cut down, probably maybe I've cut uh, probably down to two and a half inch, which is pretty good sort of profile size. And you can see those little arms waving around. So the cool thing with those little arms, I just find this plastic, I have it in the kit just in case, you know, if stuff's not happening. Like I've had a few situations where I say I've fished a drain 
and there's just, I know there's fish in the drain, the drain looks awesome. Can't get them to eat, can't get them to eat, can't get, and then I throw this thing in there and I just flick it. I flick it, wind it a bit, flick it, wind it a bit. And basically what I'm doing is I'm making it just dance, sort of dance without moving too far. And those two little antennae, they just shake like crazy. So I don't know whether it's shrimpy, you know, representing a shrimp or, or prawn sort of flicking. And then there's all this movement of these little antennae dancing. So I find if you really, really, know, you, you know, if you're fishing a snag or an area where you know there's a fish, there's gotta be a fish here, try that technique because it is dynamite. Hey, just really slow it down, shake it, give it a little bit of a drag, shake it, just shake it and hop it, but mainly get those antenna going. And, and it must just send really cool vibrations through the water. And I've, I've caught some really nice flooded out of drains where I haven't managed to get them to eat anything else. So definitely worth a go. <clears throat> All right, do I scent my Ned rig was another one. Do I fish scent? Generally, I like I fish scent all the time. Procure super gel, all the tinted bait sources are good as well, like shrimp's a good one for your Ned rig but I always sent up my plastics. It, it, I've just had too many occasions where I go, gee, it's a bit quiet, haven't had a bite for a while, put scent on, boom, fish on. Or I'm getting short taps, I put a bit of scent on, throw it out there, and the next one is a solid connection. The fish really get it in their gob. So that Procure Super Gel, it's got the amino acids, the bite stimulants, the UV enhancement. It's got all that techie stuff, but it's also got real ground bait in there. So for me, it's the best of both worlds and it's super, super sticky as well. So it stays on for a long time. Put it on every 30 or so casts. Just put a tiny bit on and spread it over it. So yes, I do scent my Ned, Ned Rig more so than I scent normally even because you're fishing slower a lot of the time. When you're fishing the Ned Rig, you're going for realistic, natural looking presentations. You're fishing it a lot slower. So definitely bang some scent on there. Favorites for me for fishing this, I, I, lo I love sardine pilchard is an excellent one. And I love saltwater yabby nipper because man, what are these things? They're yabbies, they're nippers, they're, they're, you know, they're those sort of creatures. So that saltwater yabby nipper is a dynamite scent when you're fishing the Ned Rig as well. So yes, scent. Yes, doesn't matter what flavor, as long as you've got some sort of scent on there because you're fishing it slow. You want them to be attracted to it, you want them to bite it, and you want them to hang onto it longer, giving you more time to set the hook as well. So what else have we got in, in our kit here? Uh, rod and reel, people said, what gear do you throw the Ned Rig on? When you're fishing Ned Rig, what do you fish it on? So I will generally fish a one to three or a two to four kilo rod, Seven foot in length is fine. Seven foot allows me in the yak to reach around the front of the yak if I need to. Same with the stand up paddle board. In the boat, it's good all round sort of length. So seven foot, one to three or two to four kilo rod. I like the one to three if I'm fishing really finessey and slow. I like the two to four if I'm, if I'm getting a bit punchier and hopping a bit more aggressively and covering a bit more ground. The, the combos that I generally fish, I will fish the Akuma Helios SX combo, which is a really nice finesse rod so uh, Helios SX in a one to three or a two to four and I team that up with an Akuma jaw so that combo is a like awesome value for money combo inexpensive combo you know not much over 100 bucks for the rod reels about you know around that 60 70 bucks for the reel put a bit of braid on there I've got platypus p8 braid on here which is uh, Aussie made braid and looks pretty nice with my jaw as well that platypus p8 so I will generally fish that is an excellent entry level combo like dollar wise you're, you're probably under 200 bucks for the rod reel and line and away you go. Um, I then also step up a bit so this is good in the sup and things like that where you know the, you don't want to put your mega expensive gear onto the sup or even into the yak a lot of the time. This reel's four bearing rock solid real simple basic you know just quality gear that you're not going to have any issue with so, so I'll fish this combo I'll step up to a Seros as well. So I love the Seros seven foot one piece and I'll fish that in a one to three or a two to four. And I generally fish that with an Apixor XT reel from Akuma in a 20 size or a 30 size. 20 is awesome size in the, that Apixor XT. So for those of you that have got space limitations and that sort of thing, the Helios SX is a two piece rod. So awesome for transport and storage. If you are restricted for space, still throws awesome, all that sort of thing. Still, still great feel and that for a two piece rod. Uh, if, you, if you're not worried about space and all that sort of thing, you might want to step up and, and go that Seros one to three or two to four. And away you go. 
All right, what else have we got there? Uh, leader. So people said to me, what leader do you fish with your Ned Rig? So it's gonna depend a lot on where you are and what type of species you're targeting and that sort of thing. For me, general estuary fishing, I will fish 10 pound platypus stealth FC fluorocarbon leader. So I, I'll often fish 10 pound or eight pound braid and 10 pound leader. So 10 pound leader is a bit of an insurance policy for me if I come across a big flathead like that 80 centimeter fish, you know? If a big flathead eats my Ned Rig, uh, if a, you know, Dewey eats my Ned Rig, those sorts of things, those fish will often, because it's a tiny presentation, they'll often inhale this presentation. And then you, you're worried about bite offs and that sort of thing. So a lot of the time, you know, I might be whacking brim on 10 pound, but if I get a big flatty or even a tailor or something else, I'm, I'm a pretty good chance. If it's tough, I'll step down to about eight pound in that Stealth FC fluoro. Uh, but I know some of you guys fish areas where it's really cl crystal clear, very heavy pressure in terms of fishing, and you may need to go down to six pound, four pound, whatever you need to do to get the bite. You know, you're better off getting the bite than fishing too heavy and not being able to get the bite at all. So get the bite if you lose it you lose it that's fishing you know but you've got to get the bite in the first place for me a lot of the fishing where i fish 10 pound is fine still get the bite and you've got that extra security in there as well so overall the ned rig i get asked a lot does it work that's that's probably the main question i get i see you doing stuff on the ned rig does it really work yep the ned rig really works it's another technique that you can have in your arsenal there so you know in my kit bag here I've got my slim swims, I've got my minnows, I've got my grubs, so I'm sorted. A lot of the time, those things, no drama, they're gonna catch me fish, it's awesome, that's fine. But some situations like where I found myself right up the top end of a muddy creek, and, I've, and I was fishing around where all those fiddler crabs were, boom, out came this, and I just smacked the brim, a lot more brim, a lot quicker on that, that Ned Rig. Same with those, picking those weed pockets. Some days you'll just get in there and the Ned Rig is the go for picking those pockets in the weed. You'll catch flathead, you'll catch brim, you'll catch grunter, you'll catch all sorts of species fishing that Ned Rig. So I'd say the main thing with the Ned Rig is, uh, you know, spend some time, give it a go. Fish mangrove edges, fish flats, fish pockets in the flats, fish the main structure on flats. And um, yeah, any of your edge bite stuff, any of your structure stuff that you're doing, Try the Ned Rig and you might find that it, that it fishes really well. I know uh, Sean that I fish with a bit, he's been out on, the, out on the reef and stuff, fishing in you know a fair depth of water and struggling to get bites on days, real still glassy days, real quiet days. And he's sent down a Ned Rig and he's caught snapper, sweet lip, all sorts of different things on that, on that plastic as well. So it's definitely not just a brim plastic. It's an, it's an effective way of targeting a lot of species and freshwater species as well. So that is a bit of a quick wrap on the Ned Rig from me. Probably I've waffled on a bit long, but anyway, the Ned Rig is definitely an effective plastic. One of the main times that I use it, and some of you would have probably had this same situation, when you have a tide situation where the high tide is quite low and the low tide is quite high and there's very little run. A lot of the time they say no run, no fun. And it can be the case where you don't have that water movement, you don't catch the fish. And a lot of your traditional techniques don't work when you don't have that run, don't have that water movement. The fish are just sulking and they're just sitting there and they don't want to eat. The Ned Rig is awesome. The Ned Rig excels on those crap tides. The tides where there's not a lot of movement, the neat tides, those sorts of things, give your Ned Rig a go. If I could give you five tips, let's see if I can come up with five tips for fishing the Ned Rig. Slow down would be one. Slow down when you're fishing the Ned Rig. Focus on key structure or key pockets in the area. Maybe Carry a couple of different colors so you can mix it up. Have a light color, have a dark color, maybe have a UV color, like your motor oil or a hot snakes. Utilize your head color to suit the situation. So whether you're fishing that dark natural head or you want a strike trigger with an orange or a chartreuse. Make sure you scent up because you are generally fishing slower when you're fishing the Ned Rig a lot of the time. So make sure you're sent up. And I think, I've, I think that's it. I think I'm done on my five. But anyway, don't forget your three inch TRD hogs. Chop a bit off his noggin. Just chop, chop off that first lot of little fins there. And you are ready to go and twitch him around like a shrimp and whack a few fish. So there you go. That is the Ned Rig. 
Uh, stay tuned, I'm gonna get out and shoot some more videos on the Ned Rig and how I fish the Ned Rig. It's a really, really cool way to fish. Uh, you'll be surprised at the results. Like I've had some awesome hot sessions on that Ned Rig when they're not eating a lot of other different profiles and things. Um, stay tuned, check out the videos that are coming up on the Ned Rig. You can also check out tacklecticks.com.au. Tacklecticks.com.au has a section called rigging guides and in there are tips and techniques actually go into tips and techniques go into the ned rig and you can read ned rig flathead ned rig broom estuary ned ring all that sort of thing so there you go good to chat i'm gonna go for a fish all the best with the fishing we'll see you out there